Okay. Hi class, I am going to um, do a demonstration of how to do a rotovap on our equipment at Bryn Mawr College. The rotovap is a research grade piece of equipment and you can take a look at the various rotovaps we have. This is our one of our newer rotovaps. Basically what they consist of is a water bath and that's a heater. So this takes the place of your flask heater in a distillation. A condenser, a very, very high capacity condenser, which has many coils and can very efficiently condense liquids, and a receiver that's built in. So this is your where your pot goes, this is your condenser, this is your receiver. So this is really a distillation apparatus. What it's desi designed for is the rapid removal of solvent from a sample that contains a solid or a very high, very high boiling liquid. In this case, you use rotary evaporation when you want the solid or you want the high boiling liquid and you don't want the solvent, okay? At the end of your lab, you're going to have a solution of dichloromethane holding mostly caffeine and a little bit of chlorophyll which comes out of tea leaves. You're going to want to remove the dichloromethane. Dichloromethane boils at 40. Caffeine has a very high boiling point. It's a solid at room temperature and it actually melts above 200 degrees. Chlorophyll has a tremendously high boiling point. So you can safely remove the dichloromethane and leave the compound behind in this flask. Now this could be done with a distillation apparatus. However, with a distillation apparatus, you would have to distill to dryness. And I think everybody knows what happens when you distill to dryness. When you distill to dryness, you are likely to form peroxides from the reaction of the organic with the oxygen in the atmosphere. And peroxides detonate when they are dry, or they can detonate. So we want to be able to distill to dryness without adding a lot of heat. It's the heat that produces the peroxides. So the way we're going to distill the dryness is by doing a reduced pressure, simple distillation with this automatic still device. Okay, when you come up to the, the distillation apparatus, you will find the water bath will already be warming. It'll only be at about 50 degrees Celsius or maybe 40 degrees Celsius. I'm going to put it at 50. That is a very low temperature for distillation. The vacuum will already be on. You might be able to hear that right now. The vacuum is an aspirator. It just consists of a tube that's hooked to the apparatus. And water is running very rapidly past that tube, sucking the air out of the apparatus. So this apparatus may be at 20 torr instead of 760 torr. When you come up to the apparatus, all you need to do is take your sample and put it on the apparatus and turn the vacuum uh, stopcock perpendicular to its orientation. Now the vacuum itself will hold the, the um, flask on, but we actually use a clip to hold it on. Sorry about that, I was running to get a clip. So what we do is we use these clips to hold the flask on the apparatus. But the vacuum itself should hold it on. So right now this whole still is at maybe 30 torr, okay? The next thing you want to do is start the flask rotating. The rotation involves taking the rotation knob, it says speed RPM, and turning it up until the flask rotates, as I always say, really fast. I have no particular setting, I just try to get it as fast as I can. The rotation causes the sample to spread out over the glass, and the spread over the glass will increase the surface area for evaporation, so the evaporation is much more rapid. The next thing you want to do is lower the sample into the water. And on this instrument, this entails pushing down on this lever 
and lowering the apparatus into the water. And it really only needs to just touch the water. So what's happening right now? The, the distillation, this is the pot again, this is the condenser, this is the receiver. The, re, the whole apparatus is at 20 torr. This means there's less atmosphere weighing down on that sample. This means the molecules can lift off much more readily at a, and at a much lower temperature, so we only need to heat it to 40 or 50 degrees. And what's going to happen in a matter of five minutes is that all the solvent in here will evaporate because it doesn't have a lot of atmosphere weighing down on it, condense on these coils, and drop into this receiver. Okay, very fast process, it takes five minutes. You should think about how long it takes you to do a distillation. Distillations often take 40 minutes before you really get them heating. Okay, so hopefully this will help you a little bit when you're in lab, but of course we will help you um, set up when you get here, and we'll go over it again. Every one of our rotovaps is of different epoch, and they're all different. So each one needs a little bit of individual instruction. You can see that this one's the same. Okay, this is sort of the history of rotovaps. These are current rotovaps. Okay, this is a rotovap from 10 years ago. You can see it's rather similar, but the way you work it is a little bit different. This rotovap is from about 15 years ago. <laughs> What is the tape for? The tape's there because these apparatuses can implode at reduced pressure. This is a rotovap from about 20 years ago. The design hasn't changed a whole lot, okay? So let's go back and see if our compound's evaporating. It's starting to evaporate a little bit. It will not look like a regular distillation in the sense that the compound may not boil, but you can see there is some liquid accumulating in the receiver. There's a little bit of liquid accumulating. So we'll let that go. So again, thank you, and we'll see you in lab this week. Got it?